I, th I think with Sanchez, as I said, it's quite funny actually that you bring up the comments from Maresca about players not being good enough and stuff like that. That was, of course, the start of the demise for Sancho at Manchester United. Yeah. So with him being a bit of a you know a strict manager, shall we say? How do you think this one will play out? Because I did think to myself that for whatever Chelsea's tr troubles are off the pitch, sometimes on the pitch, there, there seems to be this, this this style of play from players individually that they're playing with freedom. They're not mm. scared to express themselves. Mm. Matt Dwayne is a prime example. If he gets the ball, he'll want to take someone on and start playing and, and put a bit of an entertainment on. Sancho, traditionally, that's what we know him as, right? That's what we knew him as a, a Dortmund when he first burst onto the scene or however you want to say it without taking Michael Richards' line. But do you think there is a, a place at Chelsea for, for Sancho to express himself, to really get his career back on side? Or do you question this one alongside all the others? Uh, no, I do think that anybody tells tells you that and tells you that for a fact they don't know we don't know it's mm. it, it has to be revealed you have to see how the players perform and ultimately it feels like i said the youth team if you perform well you secure your place in the team Noni scored a goal against Savet in the conference league secured his place in the starting lineup for chelsea in the game against wolves and took his chance yeah. and now he's in the starting lineup and he's in the england squad you've got to take your chances if james sancho comes in say he starts over a netto and he creates an assist or he scores a goal, then yeah, that's his place until he loses it. But the nature of having such a big squad is that it's going to be very, very competitive. And the only guaranteed starters in that squad, I'd probably say, are Cole Palmer and can't really think of many others. Yeah, He's the only yeah. player that doesn't get dropped no matter what the situation is. Mm. Everybody else's position is up for grabs. Mm. Um, we mentioned it there a short while ago, but the ownership situation, it continues to make headlines. Um, Chelsea essentially have two owners wanting to to buy each other out. There's obviously Todd Bowley. There's Bed, uh, Bedad Egbali, who is the, the most active and, and powerful figure at uh, Stamford Bridge. But, I mean, it, Jace, it's, it, it just seems like it's such a mess, right? Everything that's happening in that football club from top to bottom. I mean, you as a Chelsea fan, a TalkSport presenter, I mean, you must be sick and tired. Well, you probably spend as much time talking about what's happening off the pitch than on the pitch, right? Well, unfortunately, um, for not just us, but um, the rest of the world, uh, Putin decided to, to go to war with Ukraine, and that was the, that was the, the mm. turning point here. And the, the club was, was sanctioned, we know Roman. You know, I, I work, was working at the club. I I couldn't work doing my doing the job because the club was sanctioned. It couldn't sell tickets. Couldn't sell it's beers. Couldn't it's sell crazy when you the think club, about the club it, shop it? was shut. Everything. Yeah, Ev crazy. Everyone lost their well. Everyone's job unless you had a contract. And I'm freelance. You 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 couldn't work for the club. No one worked. And the club, yeah, you, know, you know, so the, it was a, it was standstill. They could make no money, and it was a terrible, terrible time. Never, by the way, unprecedented. Never seen this before as far as I'm aware, anywhere in, in, in world mm. football. And then what happened, the club was taken off, off Roman, uh, the, the government took charge of, of the football club, and then there's, then they want to get rid of it, then they want to sell it, and then there's a, there's a bid, there's about, eight, there's about six bids, I believe. Mm. Three were serious, three weren't, from my understanding. Um, and when you're, when you're dealing in a situation like this, the due diligence to buy a football club, you, these, these deals, I mean, how long did Sir Jim Ratcliffe's take over take? How long did that take? Yeah, yeah it, was, take, it, was, it was close to a year. Right. This happened in about eight weeks, Yeah, nine weeks. So you're now getting, they want to buy the club and Bowley and uh, Igbali, they, and Clear Lake is, is, the, com, is the, uh, the hedge fund that, the, that I believe that owns, that Igbali is. He earns 61%. Bowley owns 13%, but there's other investors in it. Mm -hmm. Basically what happened is people were prepared, huge money, by the way, huge money. It was, it felt, looking back, rushed. Mm-hmm. Because the, the clock was ticking. I mean, there was a lot of rumour, I mean, rumours that Chelsea could go out of business. That was never going to happen. The, the, the government were never going to allow that to happen. Mm. But then Chelsea came into a situation where the club was taken and the transfer windows opened. So there was a lot of rushed say, um, purchases. Uh, Rudiger left, Christensen left. And then we, we saw... Um, Kulabali came in. Kulabali come in. Terrible decision. Abamian. <laughs> Abamian came in. That turned out that that, that was was a, a a buy for Thomas Tuchel at the time was very much involved in that. Tom yeah. Bowley was involved. Yeah. So you look at the transfer policy at that particular time. It was bringing in experienced players. Abamian, Kulabali, and Sterling yeah. on big money. Well, that was Tom Bowley. Tom Bowley was thrust into a, a job that clearly he didn't have enough experience in. Mm. And I think that if you go back to the root of what, what we're talking about now, now if you look forward to the transfer policy, Todd Bowley has is, is taken a bit more of a back. So Barley's come in. So now we're seeing young players. The squad has changed completely. Young players, long contracts, lower wages. The wage bill has been cut so something like 50% compared to what it was. So the transfer policy has changed 
almost not in between, but certainly from the tr- first transfer window and to where we are now. Now that's a, there's a reason. You've seen Koulibaly go. Yeah. Mm. You've seen Aubameyang go. Now mm. Sterling is, is the last of those three players, the experienced players on big wages, to be eased out. So the, so the club has changed in terms of its direction, but it, it would appear from the outside, and I don't know any more than you do, but it would appear from the outside looking in, that the, the, the way that the club wants to be run, everyone... Everyone has been... Todd Bowley is the one that everyone points the finger at. Right? It's not been him. It ain't been him. No. It's not been him. No one knows... It, it, well, mm. they should know it. Ed Barley's the one that pulls... Has the, there is, I believe, because he has a stake in it, Bowley, he could veto. He has, he has the power to do that. But the club is run by Bowley. That, that he makes the big calls. He makes the big decisions now. And it, we're going down a different route. And it would appear, without knowing, it would appear that... Bowley wants to go one way, Barley wants to go the other. They both, from what I know, want ownership of the club. They, yeah. they want to buy one another out. Watch this space. If, if they do, sorry, just yeah. a quick question. Obviously, Chelsea boys through and through. If you did have to pick one or the other owner, which one would you prefer and no why? Idea. No, we, we don't, no, we don't, we don't no, know. No, like, no, there's no. so many things that are unknown. What I will say as well is that the reason why Top Bowley was the face of it and fronted it because he he's very much driven by that and he's obviously owned sports clubs in different countries. He put together the consortium Blue Co, which included his investors as well as as well as Clear Lake. But Clear Lake obviously owns sixty one point five percent as Jason said. And so Top Bowley was the face of it. But like you say, Jace, he was ne- he was never fully in control of that situation. He was the interim sports he director. He was the face. He was the, the, the face yeah, of it. Yeah. But it wasn't him pulling the strings. It wasn't him pulling the strings. And unfortunately, there's like three factors now: the, the culture that's going on in the club that they they're split on in terms direction the club's going in the stadium's a big bone of contention in terms of what they're going to do regarding that and also the um the, the transfer policies as well so it's a it's a it's it's interesting and pochettino as well going was a huge part of it Apparently yeah Bowley was... were you both upset poch poch moves well, well, the the but with poch you were were you, well, like, were you just... surprised he ended up like that Jace? well no no i'm not surprised <laughs> you're never surprised probably nothing surprises you yeah. anymore yeah. does it Jace? surprise is definitely not a word i would use but <laughs> it, it's towards the end of the season. I, I think from from Boxing Day onwards, I think we were the th- had the th- if you had a league table between then and the end of the season, I think we were third. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think a lot of people forget that we actually had a really good second half of the season because we had such a bad start to the season. We were always playing catch up. We lived in eleventh, tenth, and ninth. Mm. We just lived there, and eventually, when things started to get together and we started picking up results, back to back wins, which, which were hard to find and we become difficult to beat, we found ourselves. In, in six, yeah, in six in the end, right? Yeah. And you think, well, how did that happen? Where did that come from? But then you feel there's a, there's a bit of continuity, Poch. I get the feeling that that Poch wasn't disappointed to go. I think he, he probably knew more than... He probably knew what we know now, mm-hmm. that there's a bit of a power struggle in the board. And I pr- he probably felt that moving forward, and the fact they only gave him two years plus a plus another year that always felt a bit you know yeah. it's yeah. a little bit like the Ten Hag scenario yeah, the extra year you know it's, like, it's, yeah. it's either back me or don't yeah neither here or exactly we're that, gonna exactly. back you but I know this time next year we're gonna be in the same scenario yeah, yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll see where, where, where this moves forward <laughs> so once that decision was made from what I know Bowley wanted to keep Poch I would not have been disappointed if we kept Poch I would not that wouldn't have been disappointed I wouldn't have been disappointed because it felt like that he got started to get to grips with what was going on but there's so much, there's so many strands to this. <laughs> yeah, there's so yeah. many so strands. So many facets, isn't there? Yeah. So many strands. And, you know, now we've we've seen again, you know, what's what's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> in sorry, the, in, it almost seems the... like this this energy of like, you just can't affect Chelsea fans anymore, can't you? Like, there's no surprise. He's been through every emotion the last couple of years, haven't so you, right? I, I, I laugh when Man United fans are talking about, <laughs> about chaos and how tumultuous it's been. Jay's a touch on it earlier. I remember when we were sanctioned and they were talking about Thomas Tuchel driving the bus. Like, they were talking about us not having shirt sponsors. I've, we've seen it all. We've seen it all I over thought Candy was years. driving the bus, no? <laughs> they were like, Jay, so you need to... He's, do, he's, doing the, he's doing the phone show live from the bus while they were in the studio. <laughs> Jay's right. At the, at the club, people couldn't work. People couldn't no, it, it was it was. But Chelsea have been a football club that have somehow, even under the the, the, the Roman Abramovich era, we functioned under chaos. We, you know, yeah, as well, far as yeah. I'm aware, we're the only side ever to win the Champions League with an interim manager. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know who? And he got sacked. And what, he wins the months? FA. Yeah. He wins the yeah. FA Cup as well. Yeah, don't yeah. You know, it's, it, we're a football club that has has managed to deal and cope and move forward under chaos. And this is this is. I mean. We've experienced chaos. Like, this is right up there. Yeah, it, it, yeah. This is this is. <laughs> would you, would you this, say this is the craziest this, this time is, now? This is this yeah, is this is this is as bigger cr- in terms of what's going on behind the scenes. It does feel the chaos is is 
louder than it's been before. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.